common point of discussion around Star Citizen is what you need to upgrade in order to increase performance. The most frequent answer is CPU, but is it really that simple? Recently, I upgraded my computer and took the opportunity to test SC in a variety of configurations to hopefully give some insights. For this test, we're using two CPUs and two GPUs, the Ryzen 3700X and 9800X 3D, and the RTX 3060 and RX 97XT respectively, giving us four possible combinations. In order to limit the variables to just these things, a few considerations have been made. All components are running stock clocks, with the exception of RAM. As each CPU uses a different regeneration of memory, the speed and timings were altered to ensure both are running identically as possible. Side note, that was a damn nightmare to get stable. Additionally, both were using the exact same drive for both Windows and Star Citizen, with a run of DDU and a fresh install of all drivers as necessary. As for the benchmark I'm using, the game is set with all settings at high, with no upscaling enabled. The loop used starts in the hubs of Area 18, walking to the hangars, taking a large ship, and flying all the way and landing at the Stanton Gateway in Pyro. The reason for this was to cover as many parts of the game as I could, whilst ensuring repeatability. This was done three times to get an average at 1080p, 1440p, and at 4K for each of the four configurations. So that's 36 trips to Pyro and back. This took a while. Now for the parts that you actually care about, the results. If at any point you want to read the charts, please pause the video. Let's first start with the benchmark for the original system with the Ryzen 3700X and the RTX 3060. Now, let's overlay what happens when you just upgrade the CPU, as many suggest. The first thing to note is the massive jump in our 1% and 0.1% lows, what you will often experience as hitching or stutter, with these values doubling or even tripling. This is to be expected, as the main thread is often the cause of these hitches, and so increasing our CPU power versus our GPU helps to alleviate this. What we don't see is a change in the average FPS, except at 1080p, where we see a 30% gain. Again, this is to be expected, as the 3060, whilst generally quite a good pairing to the 3700X, is a bottleneck at higher resolutions, whereas at 1080p, it's able to outpace the CPU. Now let's swap this out for just a GPU upgrade. Here we see the story flip, with our 1% and 0.1% lows actually getting slightly worse. This could be an AMD specific quirk, or something else that I'm missing, but I'm not quite sure as to the cause of this. We also see our average frame rates increase by 30% at 1080p and 1440p, with a massive 100% increase at 4K. I suspect the reason for this is more down to VRAM. Whilst SC never managed to saturate the 12GB of VRAM on the 3060, the near double bandwidth of the 9070XT at this more RAM heavy resolution makes a huge difference. Finally, let's show what happens when we get both the CPU and the GPU upgraded. We see similar 1% and 0.1% lows to our original configuration, with the small variance easily put down to the quirks of Star Citizen. Our averages, however, see much higher improvements, far exceeding the sum of their parts, with 120% increases in average FPS at 1080p and 1440p, with a 150% increase at 4K. So, what can we surmise from all of this? Well, let's first clear something up. If you have a clear bottleneck, that will always be the thing to upgrade in order to see the best increase. But assuming all things are roughly equal, first let's consider the CPU. At 1080p, you will see both average FPS gains as well as a reduction in hitching, making this a clear choice for anyone who's at this resolution. At high resolutions, you're not going to see any increase in your average FPS, but if your average frame rate is already pretty good or at least high enough for you to be comfortable, upgrading the CPU will help with those 1% lows. As for the GPU, this will result in an increase in average frame rates regardless of your resolution, and at 4K especially, newer cards with high memory bandwidth will make a big difference, though this does come at the trade of your 1% lows. But the multiplicative effect of upgrading both CPU and GPU is simply too much to ignore. As such, if you have low frame rate, you cannot neglect one part of your PC for another. 
Now, I want to be very clear on something. I am not saying that everyone needs to go and get a 9800X3D and pair it with a mid-range GPU. In fact, I would not recommend my PC configuration at all, unless, like me, you intend for your CPU to last through two GPUs. 70 tier cards should be paired with a 9700X or a 14700K. Don't waste your money on something you're not going to be able to leverage, and also keep in mind that SC is never a good benchmark for PC performance. Any questions or thoughts, leave them below, as well as any ideas for other benchmarks I could try, except for RAM and VRAM. I'm already on that. Thanks for watching. I'll catch y'all next time.